Hi, my name is Ben Armstrong. Hi, this is David Koch. My name is Thomas Maurer. Hi, I'm Donna Sarkari. Hi, my name is Lana Montgomery. Hi, I'm Seth Juarez. Hi, I'm Aaron Thomas. I'm Jess Dodson. Hi, I'm Rocky Heckman. Hi, I'm Sonia Cuff. Hi, I'm Troy Hunt. Hello, this is Wally Mead. My name is Reed Purvis. Hi, I'm Lars Clean. Hi, my name is Alan Birchall. Hi, I'm Adam Fowler. Hi, I'm Sky Guthrie, and you're listening to the Need to Know Podcast. All the latest Microsoft Cloud news, as well as industry guest deep dive conversations. It's a Need to Know Podcast. All thanks to the CIA Ops patron community. The Need to Know Podcast. Catch us on Twitter and Facebook. N2K Podcast. And online at ciaops.podbean.com. Welcome along to the Need to Know Podcast. My name is Robert Crane and you join me for episode 303 in May 2023. So if you do want to reach out to me after the fact or have any suggestions or feedback, please, by all means, send me an email, director at ciaops.com. Don't forget to have a look at the video companion of this podcast at Director CIA. You'll see everything that I'm talking about uh, on the screen here, uh, on the Twitters at Director CIA, also uh, on Mastodon, so twit.social forward slash Director CIA. I've also got an offer for people to come in and join a Teams share channel that I've created for free. So the idea is to share information, have comments, uh, and work with others, focus on the Microsoft Cloud, as well as get experience on using a a Teams share channel. Just go to my blog, blog blog.ciaops.com, and do a search for Join My Share Channel. You should uh, find an article there, and then just let me know when you've set it up at your end. Don't forget the CIOPS merch store, great place for t-shirts that make a statement at any conference and all of the you know sort of free capabilities that are created, the content here, uh, is done with the help of the CIOPS patrons who pay a subscription to join a community of progressive people who want to know and keep up to date with the latest in the Microsoft Cloud. I encourage you to consider that, have a look at that if you want to have more information on a regular basis and also support uh, the free content that I uh, do create there. So thank you very much for those people. And again, you'll find information about that at ciaopspatron.com. So with that, why don't we get into the news? The big news in the past week has been Microsoft Build. That is now complete. However, all the sessions are available for you to go in and review. Now, you'll find all of that at build.microsoft.com. Uh, you can go in and watch all the sessions again, uh, pre-recorded <coughs> that have so that have been recorded and review them. I really like doing this as the preferred option because you can go through at a much higher speed. You can jump between the ones that make sense to you. Now, generally what I would suggest, most of this obviously is aimed at developers since Build is a developer conference. However, there are some very, very interesting items in here. I would suggest to you that the starting point is always to have a look at the major uh, keynotes, the one from Satya, um, Panos is in there, a few others. There's also some really interesting sessions from Mark Rosinovich. Uh, as well about the back end in Azure, how some of this AI stuff works and how Azure deals with it. So lots and lots of really good sessions in there. I'd recommend you just you know go through the catalog, pick the ones you like, and certainly would start with the keynotes to give you the major overviews. And then from there, pick and choose any sessions that make sense to you. But remember, it is a developer conference, but really handy that it is recorded. We can go back and view that at any point. Now, if you want to know all of the updates and information that was announced at Build, you'll find uh, this article website here called the Microsoft Build Book of News. Now, I'll make sure that I link all of these in the show notes for this episode so you can go in and have a look. But the Book of News basically is the summary of all the you know, announcements, all the changes that are happening in the Microsoft platform there. So it's going to give you that one reference point to go in and have a look at you know, what, what has changed, what has been updated. And that will then link off to additional articles so you can do more research on anything that grabs your interest there. So another article here that I think is worthwhile having a look at is one called Expanding IT Value in Windows 11 Enterprise and Intune. So there's a couple of items in here which I'll dive dive into a little bit more detail. One of them is Windows 365 Boot, allowing you to boot directly to you know, your cloud PC. Um, integration enhancements with uh, things like Bluetooth and VPN. Uh, organizational messages, if you're interested in those as well, they will be available at the end of May. Some updates to AutoPatch, that's now in preview. We've got the ability to update drivers and firmware 
in Intune. Universal Print has had some enhancements made to it. Uh, and again, lots and lots of features that are being added to you know, Intune on a regular basis. And again, the article will be linked in the show notes for you to have a look. Now, speaking of Windows 365 Boot, that has now reached public preview. This is going to give you the capability or the users the capability to go in and log in or you know log in directly to their cloud PC. So rather than having to log into a device <clears throat> and then run some sort of uh, you know um, RDP style client or terminal service style client to get into the you know cloud PC, you'll be able to do that directly uh, on boot. So we'll boot, the machine with device will boot up and then you can go straight into Windows 365 uh, to use the machine. Now it's a fairly extensive blog post here, has lots of uh, information for you uh, around you know, setting it up, managing it, maintaining it. So I would recommend that if you do want uh, this capability to boot straight into a Windows 365 cloud PC, this article is really good. We'll take you through step by step uh, exactly what uh, is uh, required here. Now, speaking of Windows 11, Bill did give us a lot of announcements, and one of the ones I'll talk about in a little bit of detail shortly is the fact that Copilot is coming to Windows 11. Now, to me, that was a bit of a surprise. Um, didn't expect didn't expect to see that. So we're going to see the capability for ChatGPT AI built into the operating system. Now, the other surprise was that we are expecting, or Microsoft announced, that we should expect to see that in June. So within a month. Uh, we basically should be seeing Copilot rolled out to Windows. Now, to me, my thinking is if we're going to see it in Windows 11 that soon, it can't be far away uh, for all other products like Microsoft 365, Security Copilot, and so on. So I would suggest to you that we should see the complete rollout of Copilot products in whatever way, shape, or form they are, uh, probably within a month. Um, So very, very exciting to see that. Now, if we focus on the Windows 11 stuff that was announced here, there are obviously additional you know, features and enhancements around security, accessibility, uh, privacy. You've got you know, things around the VPN stuff. You've also got the integration with you know, the new security chip we've got here. Um, we've also got you know, enhanced language support if you want, uh, improved Bluetooth audio and so on. And, you know, we've also got the ability to, you know, have our enhanced news widgets if you do use those. Now, there are some features here that um, have been added in preview. This allows uh, the protection for devices and credentials uh, using the preview of the token protection for sign-ins. I think that's going to be really handy so that your credentials, once logged in, won't be stolen and reused somewhere else. We talked about the Windows 365 boot capabilities, again, mentioned in here. We've also got the ability to uh, have new isolation capabilities for our Windows 32 um, apps. We've also got, um, as mentioned, the uh, ability for our cloud print to be easily accessed using QR codes and setup. Uh, and we've also got the upgrades to Windows Auto Patch. And of course, don't forget that LAP, so local administrator password solution is also available set up. Um, you can use that today. Um, and we've got you know the endpoint privilege management capability, which is in preview now. Sign up for that, get a 90 day trial before needing a subscription. So again, lots and lots of uh, capabilities in there, including uh, the ability to integration with Copilot, which I'll talk about shortly. Now, another interesting one that I found was that Microsoft um, went down the you know AR VR style um, you know track with what's called what it calls Mesh. So Mesh uh, basically allows you, in in theory, to go and create an avatar. Now, the ability to create an avatar is already available in the older version of the Teams client, so the non-preview version. If you want to go in and configure an avatar, you can do that. You basically add in an app from the store, configure the avatar, and then when you're in a meeting, you can swap to and use that avatar. Now, I really like that. Use that quite a lot now. A great way to have a persona rather than having the camera on all the time. Now, the interesting thing here is the extension of those avatars is to put them into a meeting space, into a virtual you know, world or virtual 3D world or whatever you want to call it. Now, Microsoft has highlighted a number of larger customers who are using this uh, capability largely to onboard uh, customers, uh, onboard new employees in the environment. So it's worth taking a look at that. Now, 
Again, I'm still a little bit skeptical of this in the SMB environment, but um, you've got to put some credo in Microsoft supporting it, using it, still pushing, still talking about it. It would seem from their discussions that the virtual 3D world stuff is not too far away. Uh, so again, keep your eye on that. It's interesting to read the Microsoft, you know, why it's thinking, why this is have value. Will this have value in SMB? Mm, we'll have to wait and see. I'd like to play with it firstly to understand it, uh, but you can certainly have a look and you can certainly see the value in large enterprises where you know, new employees onboarding can come into this you know, virtual space, virtual lobby, virtual training uh, environment with others. Um, I'm not, like I said, 100% sold on it for SMB, but certainly would recommend that you keep an eye on it. I don't think it is far away from uh, ending up in our environments. But if you do want an avatar when you are on your Teams meetings, that is available today. Like I said, add the Avatars app into your Teams, customize an avatar, uh, and then you can use that inside your meetings. Now, the other one that I called out was the integration of Copilot into uh, Windows 11. So this one was a little bit unexpected, I must admit. It makes sense, don't get me wrong, but the idea here is we sort of weren't expecting them to bring Copilot into Windows 11. As I said, the interesting thing is they're also talking about bringing this uh, to Windows 11 in the June timeframe, so they're not far away at all. So the idea here is and the Microsoft do have some good videos that help you understand the value statement of putting Copilot in Windows. And an example would be is let's say you want to change your uh, desktop from light mode to dark mode. So rather than digging through settings and finding all that, you can just go to Copilot on the right hand side and sort of say, you know, change my environment to dark mode. And it will not only find that, do that for you so that you don't have to go in and you know, dig through settings or click this, follow this. So. Uh, very interesting uh, approach here. I think it's going to have a lot of benefit. I really want to firstly get my hands on it and see what it's like in reality, how well it works, how well it uh, answers or how it deals with some of the questions. I think it would do it fairly well. The other thing I'm interested in once I've got my mind around it and see it for myself is, okay, how does a normal user, so you know, how do my parents, for example, deal with the co-pilot there? Is it something they're going to use and like and rely on? I certainly seem to think that it will be once they become familiar with it. So there's still this uh, question around, you know, what's the benefit of AI? We hear a lot of talk, you know, you know, we're a bit scared of it potentially. But I think, again, integrating into Windows 11 will go a long way to proving the value of AI, let's call it, uh, to users and get them to use it more and more and more. So I can also see this potentially as a play by Microsoft to you know, uh, offset, you know, Google search potentially. So if you can use Copilot to configure your local environment, uh, what's to stop you from using Copilot to use, you know, to do it as a search engine as well. So rather than going into a browser and going to Google and doing a search, um, I think I'd be very interested to see whether that converts, whether people start using Copilot once they're comfortable with it for internet searching as well as you know configuring, setting up, managing their own machine. So I sort of see the play there. I'd be very interested to see how that's taken on board. Given what results Copilot is producing and how it's simplifying things, I think, for users rather than giving them a list of uh, links, random links to uh, go and click on many of those, which are either paid links or malicious links these days, it seems. Uh, I think this, again, has a lot of positivity around it, but we'll need to wait and see. Now, another thing that Microsoft announces part of this uh, new Windows 11 capability is what's called Dev Home. So if you do do some development on your Windows device like I do around PowerShell, this is going to allow you to set that up, configure it, connect to your uh, repos, <coughs> uh, excuse me, your repos uh, in uh, the environment uh, and set those up and configure your Windows machine to be a development box without too much hassle. So the aim here is obviously for Microsoft to get developers to use Windows as their development box. The idea here is that we're going to install a free app. So you can search the store for Dev Home, install it on your environment, connect it up to your repositories and whatnot, and then start using it as your sort of hub for development. All sorts of development uh, is done in there. You get a nice dashboard overview, push-pull requests, all that sort of stuff. 
uh, is in there. So the idea is, is again, like I said, Microsoft trying to make this Windows uh, box as a preferred option for developers. Now you've got the um, you know Windy, Windows subsystem for Linux in there as well. Obviously, their play. You've also got some enhancements to Windows Terminal, uh, the ability to integrate with you know GitHub Copilot and so on. Uh, if you do use Windows Terminal, love it. It's got some additional features like the ability to break it out into multiple windows if you want. Um, also, some development on uh, Windows on ARM for you as well. Uh, lots of links there uh, that have been added. So I certainly recommend you go in and have a look at this article about the, you know, the new capabilities, what's coming to Windows. But I think the most exciting one and the most unexpected one was certainly Copilot for Windows 11, which we expect to see hopefully uh, in June, so not far away. So another article here about hardening Windows clients with Intune and Defender for Endpoint. More like a summary of what to look at, what to think about, how to set this sort of uh, stuff up. It's a good summary. I'd certainly recommend to people to go in. A couple of new uh, items you know, introduced here or announced here. So uh, again, I think it's a really good article to give you some idea of you know how to do this, set this up, some best practices around that. So again, all the articles will be linked in the show notes so you can go in uh, and have a look at that. Now, another one here I'll call it is cyber signal shifting tactics fuel surge in business email compromise. I think that this is a bit of a, a very high level look at you know, business email compromise. But the big takeaway in here is the link to the fourth edition of the cyber signals that Microsoft produced a nice uh, PDF high level overview, probably more targeted management or you know people who run organizations rather than technical people. So something you could download and send on to those people to help them understand the challenges around, you know, cybersecurity in this day and age. So again, a handy little reference for non-technical people. <clears throat> the last one I'll call out is this article on automatically disrupting adversary in the middle attacks with XDR. So in essence, what it's saying is if you're using Defender products, so Defender for Office 365, Defender for Endpoint and so on, they've now included this capability to disrupt uh, you know, adversary in the middle. So I think ransomware, the uh, user is compromised and then you know something launches to try and run ransomware, lock all the files uh, in the device. The idea is, is Defender will detect that and isolate and prevent that from executing. So the good thing is, is if you have those products in place, there's nothing that you need to do. They will be part of uh, the product, the service going forward, uh, automatically configured, automatically turned on. So that's good. But if you do want to know uh, where they are, how to set them up, the results, what it looks like, also some handy links down the bottom as well of this article, I recommend you go in and have a look. But again, more features, more capabilities being added into the Defender products at no additional cost for people that are subscribers to those services. <clears throat> all right, with all that said, let us turn to... A discussion around uh, Microsoft's new package manager, relatively new. So this is something called Winget. So if you go to the command prompt and you type Winget, you will get a range of information about the Windows package manager. Okay. Now, the good thing is, is that Winget is included in all Windows 11 devices. So there's a command line interface that is built in to Windows 11. Now, if you have a Windows 10 device, you can go into the Microsoft uh, store on your device and do a search for Winget and it will come up with uh, an option here that is basically the app installer. So if we click on this, you'll see that there's an app installer from Microsoft Corporation. Download that onto the device um, and it will then basically put Winget in the background uh, for you if you want to do that. So if you don't have Winget, you can certainly get it directly from the Microsoft store. Now, the good thing about Winget is that it can work with applications that are already you know, on the environment. So to see what applications are on your device, you just go Winget space list, and that will list out all the applications that have been installed on the device. Now, when we look at the list here, you'll see you get basically a friendly name. You get an ID. The ID is really important when we go to install and uninstall these sort of things. You get a version number and you'll also get a source column. Now the source column indicates where the install came from. Now you'll see when you look at this column, you'll see that the source could be Winget 
and it may also be blank so that means it hasn't come using the package manager now the good news is is that winget can work with applications that weren't installed uh, with winget as well so again super handy capability to be able to you know achieve that uh, if you want so <clears throat> the first thing we can do once we've got a list let's say we want to install something so what i can do here is i can do uh, winget space install and then you know the id of the application in this case i'm going to install camtasia i know the name is camtasia so i'll hit enter to uh, install uh, camtasia now what the package manager does it goes off to its repository it finds the details the information of how and where camtasia the install of camtasia is it will download that it will then start the installation process now that installation process i can also control and accept you know user settings and all that sort of stuff as it installs so all of that is controllable uh, with winget now <clears throat> The interesting thing here is that all of this again is is open source so microsoft will have and maintain its own curated repository of applications now that is going to contain the vast majority of applications that most people use so camtasia adobe microsoft um, all the big suppliers there now there will also be or there also is a community repository a number of community repositories so the idea is if an application isn't in the, the standard curated Microsoft repository then a community repository may source that as well and you can point winget to look at you know the Microsoft repository or a community repository if you want so as winget grows in influence we're going to see more and more applications added to the Microsoft one as well as to any community ones now the third option is is if none of those suit your needs you can then go in and create your own repository your own winget repository that can be used to install and update applications now you configure that with the configuration file so you would say you know basically uh, like a json file that would say this is where the application is this is how to install it all of that information is contained in the config file and it would point to a repository or the standard repository of the application so in summary we can have and most cases people will be using the standard microsoft curated repository or you can also start using a community-based repository and you can also use your own custom repository uh, if you so wish to go in and install applications now to uninstall that application it's basically the same thing so we go winget space uninstall and then the name or the identity of uh, the application so in this case I'm going to uninstall Camtasia <coughs> now and I just type in that it will then locate the application and then remove it you know in the appropriate way now remember as I said when you use winget it can use packages that were installed with winget but it can also uninstall or remove or manipulate applications that weren't you that weren't installed with winget so for example uh, let's go in here and have a look at <clears throat> you know the Microsoft Xbox game bar okay so again if we have a look you'll see that it actually wasn't um, installed using winget so hopefully if I uh, uninstall the that that will then be removed uh, from my environment so remember winget doesn't works with all software that is detected on our Windows device here now the other thing that we can do is we can also not only install and uninstall applications we can also upgrade um, those applications well so if i go winget space you know upgrade space and then i put in um, the application name here so let's have a look and see uh, what we've got here that could be updated so let me pick windows terminal for example all right so what I'm going to do is Windows Terminal is already on this device and I'm going to go winget space upgrade space and then the identity of the software I want to upgrade and in this case it's microsoft.windowsterminal. Winget will go out and see if there are any new patches, any new updates uh, for that application and if there are, they weren't in this case, it would then install those and take care of it for me. So really, really handy capability to not only install, uninstall application but also keep them up to date. Now, once you've got your machine the way you want, I really like using Winget because now what I can create is a script with all the so all the so all the software that I need uh, to be installed on the next device that I use, the next VM, the next demo, or whatever. 
Now, I can actually use Winget Space Export to export the software configuration or software installs on you know, a uh, base device and then use Winget Space Import to pull that file, that configuration into the next machine. So once I've got a base level machine the way I want it, I can export the total install of software on there and then use that to import into another machine and it will go on and do all the installs for me. So again, really, really handy way. You don't have to do each one manually on the command line. Again, once you've got a base machine the way you want it, you can export that configuration and import it into the next machine. Now, I certainly appreciate that a lot of people would prefer not to use the command line. Now, I really like it because, as I said, I can take um, the command line and I can create a script and then I can rerun that over and over again to get a standard machine. Um, again, gives me more control as I can control each line uh, individually. However, there is also now a community building up around the Winget uh, application. One of these ones is called winstall.app. Now, what that allows you to do is if you want to install, for example, Adobe, so let's go in here and do a search on this site. So you'll find that at winstall.app. So I do a search for Adobe. You'll see that uh, it will search its database. It will nominate the application here. All right, and then basically what I do is I add the desired application uh, that I want. And I can add multiple applications here and then it will allow me to generate a script to install that. So you don't have to necessarily generate or, or do low level uh, command line to work out what's going on here. You can use tools like winstall um, app to create the required options in here. So this is going to give me a script with the appropriate command line options to do an install. Now the last one that I'll speak about, which I think is probably the most handy of the lot, is something called uh, Winget UI. Again, a community project here. You basically install uh, the application onto your device. I've got it installed on this device. You just download it uh, and install it. It will then put a little icon or program on you, in your machine, on your system tray. And you'll see here, it will actually give you effectively a GUI over the top of Winget, right? So again, if you go in here, you can look at all the installed packages, all right? And if we want, we can, you know, right mouse click on these, we can uninstall, uninstall as administrator, you know, do all that sort of stuff in. So A, it lists out, again, all our products. We can export, you know, that file that I talked about uh, previously from the command line, it's done with a GUI here. If there are any updates to any of the package, they will appear in the updates tab here and you just select them and update them, right? So uh, again, really, really handy way to make sure your machines are up to date. Because it's running in the system tray, it will tell you whether any updates um, are required and then you can go in uh, and uh, deal with it as well. So think of Winget uh, UI as you know, a management uh, interface you know, over the top or dashboard over the top of Winget. So Winget is running underneath the covers here and Winget UI is a solution that somebody's written to sit over the top of it. Now, again, Winget UI, fantastic interface, really well written. I uh, encourage you to go in um, and support them, but you can certainly install this uh, on your local machine to manage your software installs as well as manage updates. Now, at this point in time, what is missing is the capability to do this across multiple devices. So Winget, Winget UI, all of this stuff at the moment is largely you know, single device or single Windows 11 uh, PC focused. Okay, So what we're missing is, is that integration to do multiple devices in a tenant and potentially to do multi-tenant uh, with many devices. Now, my understanding is from Microsoft is they're looking to, you know, use the Winget capability in Windows as their base level or their new approach to doing package manager, which is really, really good news. Their approach has been a, hit, a little bit hit and miss over the years, in tunes a bit, cumbersome to work with when you're installing, managing, update and patching apps. Um, again, the idea here is if we get Winget as a nice uh, standard you know, set up, we can use the command line if we want to stand alone, but if we can integrate it with Intune, which I believe is, you know, what they're aiming to do, it's going to give us that capability to install, manage our software from policy using Intune with Winget handling all the heavy lifting on the devices, which is a really nice uh, package manager, as you've seen. 
once we get it into Intune, once we get the ability to deploy WinGet on multiple devices in a tenant, you know, in a nice, simple, easy way with policy, we're also going to get potentially the way a uh, way to do to look at this with multi-tenant using things like Microsoft 365 Lighthouse. So. At this point in time, there is no multi-device, multi-tenant solution with Winget. However, uh, my understanding is Microsoft's working on that very hard. They're looking to you know, realign the way they do package management. Now, that's going to take a little while to do it, so it's not something that's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm very confident from what I've seen that you know they are moving in the right direction. They are doing this integration. It's going to take them an amount of time, but once you see and start using Winget and look at some of these community tools and the focus on it being more open source, you know, multi-repos if you want, I think that's a really positive step and I think that is really going to make a big difference uh, to you know, the package manager. Now, the last thing I'll throw into the mix to consider here is that the Intune suite, Microsoft has touted that as including you know, third-party patching. It would seem to me that that third-party patching capability is going to come to us courtesy of Winget. So whenever that becomes available, it's not available as yet, hopefully not far away, my gut feeling would tell me that more than likely this is going to be have Winget under the covers to allow all of that to happen. Um, once you start using Winget and having a look at your environment, seeing what you can do at least standalone, I think you get the idea that this really is the solution that's going to allow Microsoft to achieve that very, very uh, well. So my advice to you is that if you haven't looked at Winget, again, Winget is available for free in Windows 11. You can add it to Windows 10. Go in and run Winget space list to look at all the software. You can then install, uninstall, upgrade, and export the settings from that workstation to other workstations. Then if you want to work with the GUI, look at winstall.app and also Winget UI. Really like Winget UI, use it all the time. It works really well. What's missing at the moment is that multi-tenant uh, capability or multi-device and multi-tenant capability. But I believe, like I said, Microsoft is working on that and hopefully we'll deliver it shortly. And keep your eyes out for what comes with the Intune suite when they release the third part third-party patching capability now. I think that's going to be pretty solid and again based on Winget. So now is the time to get in there and start learning uh, more about Winget. So with that, hopefully you've got a good base of what's happened in build or the updates. Really excited to see Windows 11 Copilot hopefully become available next month. Hopefully you've got some more information about Winget. Don't forget if you Listening to this, there is a YouTube companion where you can actually see some of the stuff that I've done here when I've run through Winget to get a better idea. But I encourage you to go in and play with Winget and look at some of these third-party apps and their capabilities and you know keep your eyes posted for what Microsoft will release, I believe, shortly um, to, manage, to handle uh, management across multiple devices and uh, multiple tenants. But with that, I'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of the Need to Know podcast. You have been listening to the Need to Know podcast from CIA Ops. For training on using technologies like SharePoint Online or Microsoft 365, visit www.ciaopsacademy.com. By purchasing from the selections available, you'll be directly supporting this podcast. To provide feedback on this episode, visit www.ciaops.com contact.